Hi everybody, Griffin Hales of Electric Bike Report back here with you today. And today I'm bringing you our review of the Rad Power Bikes Rad Trike. Now this is a pretty exciting review as this model was the most requested from Rad customers. Now for many people, two wheels just won't do and they need the stability of three and that is what trike design can afford you. Now that could be seniors who are looking for a little bit more balance or people with physical limitations that just need that, the help of the extra third wheel. Now with that though, you also need a trike that is fun, that is useful, and feels like it is worth the cost. So was Rad able to deliver that? Let's go ahead and dive into our review and find out. Now, while a trike has been a long requested model from Rad, it is not something that they have rushed to the market. As a matter of fact, the development team took three years to bring the Rad trike uh, together. And the inception of it actually goes further back than that. Uh, Rad Power Bikes' founder, Mike Radenbaugh, uh, back in 2007, was helping a customer with Lyme disease try to fit an electric trike to them. Now, it's been clear for a while that there is a need for a three-wheeled electric device to help people get around and a lot of attention to detail and care went into how to bring this bike together. Now, that all starts, of course, with cost. In order to make something truly accessible to people, it has to be something people can afford. And Rad has done a good job of keeping costs fairly low here at around $2,500. Now, you have to remember that there are a lot of e-bike options out on the market today, but e-trike options are fewer and further between, especially if you want a good quality one. So at $2,500, that's relatively affordable for the average consumer. Now, not only is it affordable, but they've also done a lot to make this trike safe. Now, a few different things kind of get uh, put into that, whether it's the 18 inch wheels that help keep it lower to the ground, the uh, slackened seat tube angle right here keeps the rider weight a little bit further back and over the rear axle to help keep wheels on the ground. And of course, even the drivetrain, which we're gonna dive into here in just a minute, it has been designed in such a way as to make this trike as safe as possible and as easy to operate as it can. Now with a trike, you also want something that is comfortable, practical, and something you can envision integrating into your everyday life. Now with comfort, it all starts with the seat here. It's a generously padded seat and it comes with a backrest as well, both of which can be adjusted forward or back, up and down. That helps riders find their ideal seated position. Now riders on this, by the way, the Rad Trike accommodates from four foot 10 up to six foot four and 325 pounds. That casts a pretty wide net, allowing a lot of different people uh, the ability to envision themselves riding along the Rad Trike here. Now, again, it's gotta be something that you can just envision moving it around and getting it in and out of uh, places at your home or at your office. And Rad actually thought this through really well because this trike can fit through a doorway. Now here at our offices, we have a double door entrance and just when I first saw the trike, I instinctively went to go open that second door. Now Brendan from our team, as soon as he saw me go and open it, he said, no, 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 it'll fit. And sure enough, it had about half an inch on either side, but it fit through just the single door. That kind of blew my mind and again, further showcases the attention to detail here. Rad went as far as to make recessed lug nuts uh, here on either side of the wheel so that it could have that space and it probably was the difference maker between getting it through the door or not. Now there is more to it as well because oftentimes with trikes you can easily pull yourself into a tight space but it's hard backing out. It's, they are cumbersome to pick up to try to lift or move around or anything like that but Rad thought that through by giving you a reverse throttle feature. So if you're able to pull in you're also able to throttle back out and it just makes it really easy to get it around. Now with the Rad Trike here, another thing that I love is it is one of the more portable trikes out on the market. They have designed this so that it could fit into the back of your average SUV or minivan. That's thanks to this folding handlebar right here, which you can engage this latch and fold that down, remove the rear seat post, and then it should be able to slide into an SUV. Not only that, but when the bike or the trike rather is shipped to you, it comes in two pieces and you can actually disconnect this right here and it should fit into a sedan as well. That sort of portability in a trike is very uncommon and makes this just so practical and useful. So while I'm very happy with the features that Rad has thought through when bringing this trike together, 
They've also given it a very competitive spec package as well. Let's dive further into the details on the full spec sheet of what you get with the Rad Trike. So the Rad Trike is a class two e-trike capable of speeds up to 14 miles per hour through either the pedal assist or through the throttle. We actually love the fact that Rad decided to cap it at 14 miles per hour. Uh, trikes in general need to be ridden more slowly than e-bike counterparts, so I like that attention to detail and safety there. Now, powering the Rad trike is a 750 watt front hub motor. Uh, this actually is a very powerful motor, and by powerful I don't mean in terms of speed, but in just its ability to accelerate the rider up to uh, the cruising speeds at the different pedal assist levels is really, really nice. Now, it comes paired with a 480 watt hour battery. Um, my initial impression was I thought that would be actually a, a little bit of a smaller battery that might not give great range, but I was proven wrong in our range tests, which we'll be showing you here in just a couple of minutes. Now, stopping the trike is a 180 millimeter uh, mechanical disc brake here in the front. And then you actually have kind of an old school throwback here. Rad has given you a back pedal coaster brake. So just like the bikes and trikes we rode when we were kids, when you go reverse on the pedals, it'll actually engage the brake that locks up this rear wheel here as well through the drivetrain system. Now, the reason I am gesturing towards the right wheel and not saying wheels is because it actually only stops this uh, right rear wheel. The left wheel is actually a free wheel, which helps mitigate a single axle problem that exists with trikes. The free wheel allows it to just spin freely and try to match the speed being uh, applied to the right wheel. So as you're pedaling around, it just makes it a little bit better for taking turns and just overall pretty good design. Now, along with the braking system, we of course have, um, we're riding on 18 inch Kenda contact tires. Uh, these tires have held up pretty well. We haven't had any flats in our um, numerous miles of testing. Uh, they roll pretty well and you're actually able to pedal the bike around decently on flat ground thanks to the smoother tread pattern. Uh, you also get a fairly bright front LED headlight and rear tail light as well. Some fender, uh, the trike comes with fenders over each wheel that do have some reflectors on it for added visibility and safety. And of course, just keeping um, water off of you as it uh, splashes up and kicks up from the tire. Now, moving up towards the cockpit here, it's actually fairly comfortable as well. This is a high-rise handlebar, which again is nice because as you're seated on the trike, it has a generous 20 degree sweep that comes back towards you, allowing you to sit upright and be able to see clearly on the path in front of you. But it's a very uncluttered cockpit overall. It only has the one brake lever, of course, since you only have the one mechanical disc brake up front. And then you have just this one controller over on the left-hand side for increasing or decreasing your pedal assist speed with a 10 uh, Fenbar LED readout for your battery. Now there is no uh, center matching screen that comes with this typically like on the Rad City or the Rad Rover. You can add that after checkout if you do want to have a display showcasing your miles per hour, or you can also get a phone mount and there's lots of different apps you can choose from for displaying your speed by mounting that on the handlebar right here. Over on the right hand side is of course the half, half twist grip throttle. And then it's just a softer overall rubber on these grips. I actually like these grips quite a bit. Now that covers all the things that come standard, but there's also more ways to equip the Rad Trike that make it more useful and more utilitous. As you can see with the test model that we have here, we have a large front basket and rear basket as well, both of which have different bags. Now I actually found these to be really useful. I really like the option to be able to take different forms of cargo with you. Um, particularly this rear basket is one that I highly recommend because it's nice to be able to load up some extra weight that kind of helps keep those wheels planted, especially as you're taking corners or turns. Again, operate trikes more slowly, but if you do have more weight, you can take the, current, the turns with a little bit more confidence. Overall, for the around that $2,500 price point, it's a pretty good and competitive uh, spec package. But now let's go ahead and move on to talk about how it all handles and feels out on the roads. Now, given that this is a trike and not a bike, it has its own way of handling. So we actually created a new test where we wanted to see at what speeds you could comfortably take a corner here on the Rad Trike. Now, we did this three different times. We did it at uh, five miles per hour before starting a turn, 10 miles per hour, and then the max pedal assist speed of 14 miles per hour here on the trike. Now, this was a, a pretty unanimous group decision where we all felt that at five miles per hour where things are slower is where the trike handles best. Uh, you can take the turn with confidence and not have to worry about uh, tipping up onto two wheels or anything like that. At 10 miles per hour, we found that we were able to do it. It uh, did, however, make us slightly nervous, just felt a little less secure going at that speed. And then at 14 miles per hour, again, we were able to navigate it, but that just requires a 
more advanced style of handling and I don't know that I would recommend people go up to 14 miles per hour when they need to navigate a turn. Now, uh, overall, I do think that the Rad trike handles fairly well as long as you kind of keep it within its limits. And Rad actually set the trike up for success so that it could be operated safely. Now, with trike design, one thing that you have to account for and solve is what is known as the rear uh, or the single axle problem. These two uh, tires here in the back, if they share one single axle that causes both tires to rotate at the same amount of speed, that can actually cause it to be a little bit tip prone. As you go to take a turn, the outside wheel needs to actually travel at a faster rate of speed than the inside wheel since it has more ground to cover. Now, how Rad's been able to solve for that is by setting up a free wheel here on the left-hand side. Again, the drivetrain only ties into that right wheel, meaning that the left uh, wheel can turn as quickly as it needs to when going right and go even a little bit slower when going left as the right wheel then takes the outside. Overall, it was pretty good engineering on Rad's part, and again, it's a safe handling trike as long as you keep it within its parameters. Another thing that Rad has done to help people um, safely travel around on trikes they even have a little instruction manual for educating people on how to best operate it. Again, it is a trike and not a bike, so it's important that you familiarize yourself with it first before riding around. Now, e-bikes and e-trikes have a lot of fun proposition, of course, thanks to the help of the motor being able to take you at uh, good cruising speeds, but it's also really important to make sure there's a counterbalance in place and the ability to brake is just as important. So we put the rad trike through a brake test. Now what we did is we brought the trike up to its max 14 miles per hour assisted speed and then came to a stop as quickly and safely as we could. Now again, the Rad Trike features a mechanical disc brake on the front tire with a 180 millimeter uh, rotor. And then of course there is the back pedal coaster brake here as well. We, we utilized both of these in our braking and got pretty good brake results. We stopped on average of 10 feet and 5 inches, which of course is one of the lowest brake tests we've ever recorded. Not fully a fair fight with the other ones we've done as those we brought up to 20 miles per hour, but the fact that you can stop this within 10 feet from its top pedal assisted speed is pretty great to see and overall pretty happy with the braking capabilities here on the Rad Trike. Now when we get bikes into review, we always put them on our circuit test to get a better understanding of the speed profile. So even with the Rad Trike here, we took it out to the EBR circuit. The EBR circuit is a one mile loop consisting of four right hand turns and a small 30 foot climb. This gives us again the opportunity to see what speeds this uh, trike is capable of, but we also get a, an opportunity to get a real good sense for the motor and its overall engagement. So from the graphic that you're looking at on your screen right here, you're going to see that I started out at about 8.8 .8 miles per hour without the help of the motor. Uh, th through every consecutive lap thereafter, uh, it helped me out just a little bit on the hills, but you're not seeing dramatic jumps until PAS4 or PAS5 when it really started to add on top of what I am able to bring to the table with my own legs. Now, it's important to understand though that with this particular test, I'm always giving it a 70% effort, and so I can kind of travel a little bit faster than the spike is set up for. It's really set up and designed to help people who have those stability issues or you know, do need a little bit of help going uh, longer distances at a more gradual and mild pace. And Rad did actually program this to give it pretty good speeds. So from this second graphic that you're now looking at, you're gonna see that Rad set it up so that PAS1 would go about 2.7 miles per hour, then up to five, and then smaller incremental uh, increases from there up to the top 14 mile per hour speed. So a couple of thoughts I have overall. Number one, the front hub motor does a really good job of engaging. It kicks on uh, fairly quickly within half a pedal stroke or so, and it does have a very smooth acceleration that I don't think people will find jarring. It was a bit of a different sensation for me because it's a front hub motor and most of the hub motors we test are in the rear, but again, that front wheel does a good job of being able to pull you along. Second, I really, really do love how PAS1 has been programmed to, to match a walking speed at 2.7 miles per hour. I love the thought of grandparents being able to get out there and to go with their uh, kids and grandkids on walks, just be able to go longer distances and not have to worry about any mobility limitations. It's just a really nice feature to see that they had that attention to detail and think through how people might want to use it. Not only that, but I can remember even the last neighborhood I lived with, every morning I'd wake up and see my, one of my neighbors trying to walk her three dogs from a golf cart. Now that's not an option for everybody and it's also a bigger, more cumbersome vehicle. So something a little bit more smaller and compact like the Rad Trike here for getting around and just going about your everyday life at a good gradual pace, I think is an awesome option. 
Now, any product that you've ever bought with a battery, you probably wonder how long it can last on a single charge, and that is something that we take the time to test here at EBR. So we have a range test work that we actually run two different times. We do it once at the maximum pedal assist speed and once at the lowest pedal assist speed that feels like it gives us a little bit more constant motor help, which in this case we chose pedal assist two for our purposes. Now what this does is it gives you kind of that floor and ceiling value and you know that um, you, just about how far you can go. So in the case of the Rad Trike with its 480 watt hour battery that pairs with a 750 watt motor, I was actually really impressed with the efficiency on display here. On the high end, we got 59 miles on Pedal Assist 2, and on the maximum Pedal Assist, Pedal Assist 5, we got 25 miles. Those are both phenomenal results. Again, with that smaller 480 watt hour batteries, I had a little bit lower expectations, but it does benefit from a couple of uh, choices by Rad. Number one, capping the speed at 14 miles per hour means that the battery just doesn't need to send out as much power to the motor. And of course, just the program, uh, programming overall will allow it to really aid uh, someone who is pedaling as opposed to fully taking over, which is really nice to see. Um, again, those are really impressive results and it actually led to the longest amount of time we ever had to spend in the saddle on any one range test. For the PAS2 test, we had our test riders out there for 10 and a half hours Thank you boys for the commitment to the team and getting us that result. Um, again, that just goes back to reinforce that you'll be able to ride the rad trike for days and days at a time, go out and do a lot of different things before you ever have to worry about charging again, no matter the uh, assist setting that you're riding at. For our final test, we wanted to see how well the rad trike could climb hills. So we went back out to our beloved test hill of Hellhole. Now, Hellhole is a third of a mile long with a 12% average grade. It's a very steep and extreme example of a hill that you might come across, but we chose it specifically because we frankly didn't expect all e-bikes or e-trikes to make it to the top. We wanted to find out what the motors are capable of when stretched to their absolute limit. Again, this is a 750 watt front hub motor, and we were very pleasantly surprised with the results we got. On our throttle only test, we were able to reach to the, uh, the top of the hill in a time of a minute and 56 seconds at a nine and a half mile per hour average pace. And then in the max pedal assist test, we did a time of 133 with an 11.3 mile per hour pace. Now, a few thoughts and takeaways I have uh, from this test. Number one, our hill tester, Justin, was blown away with how well it, with how well it did for him. He had actually just strained his hip flexor the week before that, so he was a little bit limited, but he remarked how it absolutely just was able to climb that hill wonderfully for him. And as you can see, it's something that you can reach the top with throttle only power. So if you do not want to aid in the pedaling, it can get to the top of even very steep hills. Rad did a lot on this motor uh, and really dialed it in. They've programmed it to allow for more torque at lower speeds. Again, are you flying or blazing to the top of hills on this? No, you're not, but you're actually getting a very uh, smooth uh, power delivery from the motor that will get you to the top. So overall, very happy with the performance on the hill test. The biggest takeaway here at the end of the Rad Trike review would be this. Rad set out to make a trike that is fun, useful, practical, and most importantly, is a good option for people requiring three wheels instead of two, and I think it is largely mission accomplished. It is a trike that climbs hills really well. It can afford you battery life where you will go days at a time without having to worry about charging, and there's a lot of safety just kind of built in from the uh, ground up when they engineered this bike. It's got a pretty good handling overall, I would say, with a low center of gravity. Again, with trikes, it's really important that you understand how to handle them, uh, first, so always take things slow, but as long as you're keeping the trike to within its paces, it's going to be a good time. Now, I really like also to get the attention to detail where you're able to pick your speed at the different pedal assist uh, settings. That PAS1 matching a walking pace is really awesome to me. I like the thought of uh, people who would otherwise maybe miss out on going for longer walks being able to go and do that. The only thing I maybe want to see changed in the future would be making the throttle speed tie in with the pedal assist speed. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're at PAS 1, 2, or 3, the throttle will at all times propel you to the max 14 miles per hour. I would have liked to see that tie in so that you could add the option of throttling just to that 3 to 5 miles per hour. Um, I think there's also an argument to be made for potentially lowering the speed too if you're someone who doesn't even want to travel 14 miles per hour and maybe cap yourself some, uh, lower at 10 miles per hour. That would be a good adjustment as well in the future. 
Now, while those are, would be nice additions to look forward to down the road, I still think that what you're getting overall is a good, safe, and fun package. And I'm really impressed with what Rad was able to accomplish here on the Rad Trike. Now, if you found this review helpful, please give this video a like. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the Electric Bike Report channel and don't forget to enable the bell notifications. And then we will, of course, leave two different links down in the description below. One for current pricing on the Rad Trike and another one for a detailed written review where you can check out more of the data we collected while taking a look at the Rad Trike. Again, I'm Griffin Hales with Electric Bike Report. We'll see you on the next review.